The overview of this presentation includes introduction to TFS, source control and different options on TFS. In general to start off with introduction to TFS, what is this TFS? Team Foundation Server is a version control tool that is available and provided by Microsoft. Whenever you install Team Foundation Server on your machine, it will act as a plugin to the SSDT that is SQL Server Data Tools. The main purpose of Team Foundation Server is to maintain all the data in the form of digitalization and update on the server. Whenever you get into a company, instead of giving you the Word documents or the list of hard documents like the hard copy of the documents, rather they recently are introducing TFS where they just give you access to the server and you can download all the documents or the previous developer work, everything from the team foundation server. I can say it's a common repository where each and every team member is maintaining the updates on the server so that each and every team in a company that is a project team will have their own team foundation server and all the servers are managed by team foundation administrator. So if at all if you have to create a new report or create a new project whether it is SSIS, AS or RS you can simply add that project to the server. Whenever you add a project to the server, a folder will be created on Team Foundation server and any of your team member can access that folder. That means instead of loading and saving the information on your local machine, you are putting everything on the server. In this case, even if your team is globalized where they are distributed across the globe, still everyone have access and complete information of what other team members are working with. That is the main functionality of Team Foundation Server. If we see the practical demonstration of how a Team Foundation Server will work, click on your Start menu and hit SQL Server Data Tools. Once you start the SQL Server Data Tools, the Connect to Team Foundation Server is available on the home page of Visual Studio 2010 Shell. Whenever you have the Team Foundation Server plugged in, downloaded and installed, it will automatically plug in with this Visual Studio. And how the server is connected and what is the server credential information will be provided along with this presentation. Whenever you are configuring new to a server, even in real time, they just give you the server access. So the way you can add a server to access the documents are click on connect to team foundation server. The first thing you have to remember here while working in the office is you should be able to connect to TDP network. This team foundation server, whatever we have here, is dedicated to TDP network. So connect to TDP network and click on connect to team foundation server. Here under servers, you can simply hit add. This is the server that has been already added to the team foundation server where I can create new documents or access the existing documents. Now, if you at all, if you are given a new server, just simply hit add and type in the server information here. Once you type in the server information, let me demonstrate that. Let me remove this theme foundation server and once I hit add, the server name here is HTTP TDP SharePoint 1 colon 8080 is the port slash TFS. So the path for this server is TFS with a port number of 8080 and the protocol of HTTP. Once you have the team foundation server URL typed here, just hit OK. The main purpose we are typing in this URL is to get access to all the documents or create any new files that can be saved on this server 
which is available for everyone on the team. Now after you add the URL, simply hit close. Now it's currently working on the team project collection. That means here I have a default collection under which this BI collection is a new team project. In general, in real time, you can assume this default collection can be your project title name and you can have multiple team projects under that. Just imagine this as the main folder and team projects as your subfolders. Depending on the values where you have to work with or the documents, you have to click on that respective team project and hit connect. Once you connect to team foundation server, this is how the team explorer is going to look like. The team explorer is, it is going to show you the connection and the directory from which you are trying to access the data or the documents. Under this BI collection, you have something called work items. This work items is if the manager or the team lead want to assign you some jobs per that week or maybe per day, they simply get on to the team foundation server and give you in the form of a query. As you are logging in with your credentials here, you can see my queries. My queries are all the jobs assigned to you, all the tasks that are assigned to you with the respective time frame. The team queries are what are the different tasks that are assigned to each and every team member and this team foundation server will very well work with agile and scrum methodology because in those two methodologies you have iterations and how each and iteration is going everything can be logged on the team foundation server. If the tester wants to report any bugs, the tester can report the bugs on this team foundation server. And once in a while the developers are assigned a task to pull out a daily or monthly or weekly report to see how many bugs are resolved, how many bugs are still under process and how many bugs are not resolved so that the management will have an idea of how many bugs tracking are done on TFS. And here you have something called source control. This is very, very important. When I click on source control, it is going to open up a new tab. Just double click on source control. It will open up a new tab. Under this new tab, this is the actual server where all your files are so stored. That is your source control. So if you want to know more about the source control, if you see here, all these are the different project files that have been added by someone. So you can download the files from here directly or else if you are creating a new project, you can automatically upload the file to this server. In general, the source control is just acting like a repository of all the folders or the projects, whatever you are dealing in this Visual Studio. That is your source control. So coming back to the presentation, if we move on, the source control, as you have seen there, has different options. You can check in, check out, manage different versions, or use different mergers to collaborate and maintain control of your team projects. So what is this check-in, check-out and manage versions? Let me get back to the source control here. So as you see here, there are so many projects created. But if I want to access maybe this TFS underscore SSIS1, that is the actual project file from which I have to do the more extension of the project that is enhancement. What can I do is as the project is saved on the server, initially I have to download a copy to my local machine. After I download a copy to my local machine, then that folder is now on my local machine and I can make any edits on that machine, on that local copy. 
If I'm doing all the edits on the server directly, there can be fair chances that I'm doing some mistakes or I'm blocking someone to use these files. That is the reason it is always a good practice to download the copies from the server and put it on your local machine and then do all the edits on that and again load it back to the server. Now, as we have seen for source control, there are different options. Check in, check out, get versions, different versions to maintain the team collaboration. Let us create a small project and add that to the source control and see how these different options on TFS will work. Mm -hmm.